When you synthesize your material in the laboratory or in industry, how you will know that your materials are nanomaterials. Nano basically means that when one of its dimension is below 100 nanometer, we call that nanomaterials. How you will know that whether your material are zero dimension, one dimension, two dimension, three dimension, or how you will know that whether it is nanoparticles, nanofibers, nanorods, nanotubes, or nanosheets. So we have some techniques or some characterization techniques to tell us about that our material are nanomaterials. I also explain here uh, all uh, detail about the one dimension, two dimension, or three dimensions. I'm not going to waste time here, but I will put this definition in the description of the uh, video. So scanning electron microscopy is a very, very common technique to tell us about whether our material are nano or not. The second is basically uh, field emission scanning electron microscopy. Both are the same techniques, but they use some uh, different uh, approaches to uh, accelerate electrons. The second common technique is basically transmission electron microscopy, scanning transmission electron microscopy. In this case, basically, the scanning electron microscopy and the transmission electron microscopy are combined here in this M. And also we have electron backscatter diffraction. This is diffraction. In this magnetic sensibility, I don't know myself about this technique. These four, these four, these four, five I know, but this one I don't know. But this technique also used to uh, detect nanomaterial. Let me show you here, very simply here, how. And nanometer also, if you calculate the crystallite size, the grain size or particle size. So look at here, this is the ACM, the if the face image, F E S E M image here. So you can see here, this, this is basically grain you call a particle, you call here, this you call a grain here, or particle. So we can easily see here that size, you see it is below 100 millimeter. So SEM can help us to detect nanomaterial. You see the scale is 100 millimeter. So these, these, these grains are a particle are very, very uh, small here. Similarly here, nanofibers here, this look this scale here, if you take this scale here and you measure this, this is below 100 nanometer somehow. So it is also clear that a fission can easily calculate. This is also another image. So we can see here, this is a nanoscale here. And if you can see transmission electron microscopy here, this is also in 100 scale here. So some something you can see here, uh, this, this is somehow closer to this uh, nanorod here is somehow 100 nanometer, you see here, so transmission. And this is another transmission electron microscopy here. So you can see here, this is 50 nanometer scale. Yeah, this is 50 nanometer. So this means that you can see here, the radius of the dia is almost 50 nanometer here. If you take the dia here, so this is 100 nanometer. This is also a nanoscale here. So this is how, uh, this is another uh, transmission electron microscopy images here. You can see here, this is 100 scale here. So when this is 100 scale, if you take this scale here, if you take this scale here and bring it here, so this is below, this is below 100 millimeter. And here we can also take the help from MHJ, MHJ software to measure this. This means transmission electron microscopy is also uh, helpful to uh, give us a nanoparticle uh, detection. You see here, this is another image here, 100 millimeter scale, and you see here this, this is uh, very, very below, in 100, 100 nanometer, yeah, below. And you can see here, look at this fibers here. This bar is almost less than this. This means this is almost 70 nanometer. This is how transmission electron microscopy detects nano 